Now that we have Mixer and Bridge installed, let's go ahead and start Quixel Mixer. Now, of course, it's going to take a couple seconds for it to open up, depending on what hardware you have on your computer. Now that Mixer is open, we have two areas we can work with. We have projects and we have mixes. Now, a project is just a folder that you make that you can store a variety of mixes that you make. So it's a way of grouping things and keeping things organized. Currently, there are two projects here, an Eddy project and a sample mixes project. Let's click the little plus symbol and make a new project. I'm going to call it procedural underscore worlds. When we add a project like this, it's literally creating a folder in the main folder where Quixel Mixer stores all the mixes. If we look at the sample mixes here, you can see several mixes are there, but there's none in ours yet. So let's click this plus symbol under new mix and make our own. I'm going to set it to 4K. And I'll just call it example one. There you go. Now I'll click OK. And we're in Quixel Mixer. Now when yours opens up, it's gonna look slightly different than mine, but we have a lot of things we can cover and I'll show you how to set it up to look any way you want. You can see under display here, it's showing a skybox. We've got all these tabs and we're gonna go through all these tabs and talk about them as we need them. Now the first tab we should mention is the layers tab. This tab is where you're gonna do 90% of your work. We apply solid colors here, textures here, paint layers here. It's literally your workhorse area is the layers tab. The next tab is the setup tab. Now this allows us to choose the 3D model we wanna use. We're currently using a two by two meter plane, but be aware that you could actually click on the drop down here and choose other geometric primitives, or you could actually import your own 3D model. Our next tab is the display tab, and this allows us to change our background. Here I've just selected a simple color gradient, and I'm using Alt, the left, middle, and right mouse button to move around in case you're wondering. You can also use Alt and the scroll wheel to zoom in and out as well. Now I'm going to switch this back to the skybox and play with the blur background slider here. But notice that there are other sliders, field of view, light intensity, light rotation. You can even set this shadow resolution for low, middle, or high resolution shadows. Since we're going to be making a really simple example, I think that these settings are fine. I'm just gonna leave them how they are. And now we're gonna look at the upper right-hand corner of the main viewport. Here we can change from 3D to 2D to aid in our painting if needed. And we can also change the skybox. You'll see a drop down with several different HDR skyboxes that you can use for your lighting. Now, some of these skyboxes have warm lighting, some of them have neutral lighting, some of them have cool lighting. But in the end, I'm going to wind up going back to the desert road because that's actually what we're going to be making is probably a section of road or highway. So we'll just use that as kind of a reference as well. Let's take a look at the controls and drop downs on the upper left of the viewport real quick. The first drop down we see says PBR metalness. Now that's the end result, that's the lighting method we're using for this material. But you can use this drop down to view other channels that you're working on in your material. Depending on your experience level, you may have heard of some of these channels, things like displacement maps, normal maps roughness maps, possibly even heard of material ID map. It really doesn't matter on something as basic as what we're doing today, but down the road, as you learn to create textures more and more, sometimes you're gonna to wanna to view these channels independently to see what just that channel looks like. And that's what this is for. As we develop more and more complex materials, you'll find yourself using this dropdown a lot. Now on the second drop down, it's simply to allow you to change the object. You can pick from several geometric primitives. 
The next item is almost always pressed. It's a button that allows you to preview displacement. Our next button is the preview tiling. And when you press it, you'll see the plane expand because it's actually showing you what your material is going to look like when it's tiled. Once we've built our material, we'll actually use this to check our texture and make sure it's working the way we want it to. Next is show grid. Now show grid is just showing us the basic grid where we set objects on in the 3D space. The last button is active area focus. Now we're actually going to leave this on, but you're not really going to use it. It'll be more important when you have an object with multiple materials or an object that's actually composed of multiple objects, like a figure with arms, legs, and a head. But on the single object, you're not going to see any difference in the interface. If we had an objects with multiple materials, we would be able to paint on them independently and select them independently, and any unselected material would be slightly faded out so you knew which material you're working on. And that's what this button does. Now our object currently has nothing on it. You can tell because it has this checkerboard pattern. So we're going to go to the Layers tab here. And we're going to look at a couple of the icons. The first one is Add Surface Layer. The second one is Add Decals. The third one is Add Smart Material. The fourth one is to add a solid color. Let's start with that one. By default, the color is going to be a neutral gray, which is just fine because we're actually going to cover this up. Just think of it as a base coat. The next button on the Layers tab is the Add Liquid Layer. Now this actually creates a layer that looks like water in your scene. So you can actually make puddles or creeks or damp areas. The next layer button is the Add Noise layer. And this does exactly what it sounds like it does. It creates a layer of noise which raises and lowers different areas of your surface. Now, of course, it has sliders and it's totally adjustable. Now, we're not going to be using this on this video, but in later videos, we will. The next button on the Layer tab is the Paint Layer button. And this button does exactly what it sounds like. It allows you to paint with either a mouse or a stylus on your material in that layer. The last button in the Layers tab is the Add Layer Set. Now, this only applies to you if you have an object with multiple materials or multiple UDIMs. And currently, we're only working on a single material. So we will not use this button at all. As a matter of fact, if you selected it, it would actually put all your layers into one set. So now that we have our start, we actually need to start building up our road surface. Now we're going to use the tab called the local library, and this is everything I've downloaded with the bridge program. And you can see that it's listed in categories. And I can check these categories and just show that category. Now, I could have just pressed the Add Surface Layer button, and it would have actually opened the local library. But I just took a shortcut and went straight to the local library. Since Mixer knows that we're making a material, it's only going to show us what it thinks we could possibly use in the current mix. That means that occasionally you're going to see this No symbol. It's a simple circle with a line through it, which is the universal symbol for no. And if you try to use it, it'll let you use it. You just double click on it and it'll load it in. But you'll see nine times out of 10, when you look in the viewport, that it's actually not something you wanted. This was a setup for animated grass. Obviously we can't really use it. So I'm just gonna select that layer in the stack and hit the trash can icon to delete it. Now let's go back to the local library and we want to just make a simple road with maybe some grass or dirt on each side of the road. So I'm going to look for some kind of concrete or asphalt texture. And I'm just checking and unchecking categories looking in there for something I might like. If I didn't have one in my local library, I could have always gone to the online library 
and just download it from there. And you double click on it and it's going to download. Pretty much everything will load with the left mouse button double click. So I'm just looking for something that will be fun. Now, as soon as we decide on our asphalt, you're going to find out why having height information is so important when you have different materials from actual world surfaces. This one will do. So it's loading now, but you're going to notice that you don't see it. Now we need to blend this with this solid color. So we're going to use from below here, and you can see that you have from above or from below. And we'll just do it from below and we'll adjust the threshold. This means that this surface is coming up from below. So if every layer has height information, including a solid color, we can use the threshold slider to adjust each layer. Currently we're doing it from below, but we also have opacity masked and from above. Now each of these options has its uses, but for the most part, you're going to play with from above and from below and just drag the threshold slider until you've got something that you visually like. I'm going to go ahead and type in a couple of values and see if they work. 0.2 is not quite enough, so let's do 0.3. That looks good. So now I'm going to hold down Alt and just move around, take a look at the texture, zoom out so I can see what it looks like. And then we'll hit the tiling button, see a tile preview. Now that it's tiled, I'll look around, check it out, make sure it's what I want. Maybe change it to a different shape temporarily. Here it is as a cube. Zooming out, taking a look. I'll go back to my plane and turn off tiling. And so far it looks like asphalt to me, so I think we're fine. This time I'm going to open up the library by clicking the Add Surface Layer button. And just click it now. And now let's go find a grass surface that we like. Actually, now that I think about it, ground or dirt might be more appropriate. So let's find a dirt. This looks pretty good. It's going to load up. As soon as we see this, we can go to the threshold slider and see that the height information is definitely working. But we're going to need something other than height information to make our road. We're going to need a mask. I can go to the edit menu and click on undo and that's going to undo my last threshold change. Now you can use undo at any time. Any layer in our layer stack can actually have a mask. It's a lot like Photoshop and most painting programs. I'm going to click on the mask button here and we're going to make a mask. As soon as I create this mask, you'll see a square icon appear on the soil dirt layer. That is your mask. You can click on it with the left mouse button to make changes to your mask and it'll highlight in blue. On the painting interface on the left hand side, you may have noticed that I increased the softness of the brush. The reason for this is the one problem with Mixer is that it doesn't always register pressure sensitivity like with the Wacom tablet and stylus. Now to compensate for this, you can lower the opacity, increase the softness of the brush to help if you're not getting pressure sensitivity on your tablet and stylus. You can paint perfectly straight lines, by the way, if you hold down the shift key before you use your stylus or your mouse. You won't see me painting any straight lines on this part because nature is almost never straight and that includes soil. So I'm just going to give it kind of a ragged edge. The beauty of this system is you're never hurting your source files. So it's okay to play. It's okay to just try things and to experiment because the original files that we are using are never actually touched. And at any time, we could actually remove this mask, totally delete it, just have it selected like it is now, and click on the trash can or the delete key on your keyboard. So everything here is adjustable. Everything is undoable. It's really easy to make different things and just enjoy it and play with the methods. And of course, the price is perfectly acceptable considering the fact that the software is absolutely free. At this point, I think I want to add another surface layer. So we'll just go over to the button. 
and I'm going to add another layer of asphalt just to break up the pattern. I'm going to go ahead and check the asphalt category. It's going to show me all I have on my local drive. And we'll pick the fresh asphalt. Now, as soon as this loads, I'm going to click on this layer with the left mouse button, hold it and drag it below the soil dirt layer. Just like in Photoshop, it's now underneath that other layer. So you'll see me play with the opacity slider for a second. And then I'm going to actually go to from below and change it to from above and play with the threshold. And as I mentioned before, you want to try both and just find a visual quality that you like by switching between the two and then adjusting the threshold. Now, before we add a decal, I want to just take a quick look at it. Look at it from various angles, zoom in and out, make sure it's going the way I want it to go. Now let's go click on the add decal slash atlas layer. It's going to open up our local library and I'm going to click on the painted street lines category and we'll just pick one. And as soon as it loads, we'll see what it looks like. Okay, it's very acceptable, but it's not in the position I want. So let's go to the placement section on the road lines layer. So we could set the repetitions in the Y axis from four to one. And then we can go and change its rotation. Set zero now, let's set it to 90. And it's kind of what we want, but tiling is not actually the placement method that's probably best for this. Let's go to the tiling dropdown and select freeform instead. Now this is going to give us a lot more freedom. So we'll rotate this 90 degrees. And it's looking better already. And let's adjust the scale. So after we scale this down a little bit more, we can use the tiling preview button and we can see an example. Now, of course, there's three roads because it's tiling both in the X and the Y, but it gives you some idea of what the road is gonna look like. I'll adjust the scale down a little bit for the road stripes, and we're good to go. So there you have it, a very quick example road done in just a few minutes. Now, if we were going to take this to final, I would use a softer brush, take a little bit more time, but this is so you understand the principles involved. For fun, I'm going to go ahead and add a liquid layer just so we can see what it does. And you can see now our road is flooded. I'm just going to take it to the top of the stack so it's on top of everything. And then we can play with the settings, drag the slider around, and see the different looks we get by playing with the water. It's very important that with this program, you experiment with all the sliders and all the possible layers. The liquid layer especially is a lot of fun and you can just mess around with the different settings endlessly and get a variety of different looks. And now that I'm done experimenting, I'm just gonna hit the trash can icon and delete the liquid layer. All right, now it's time to save this. You can see by the asterisk there by the name, we haven't saved in a while. So I hit save, make sure it's still on my Procedural Worlds project and it's got the same name and hit the save button. And now we've saved the project. The next thing we're gonna wanna do is actually export this to the bridge program. The reason for this is we need to be able to get to the Unity export plugin. So here on the export tab on the right hand side of the screen, I'm just going to go and select a library from the drop down. Okay, now this is going to allow us to save it to bridge. It's important to select a category so you know where it puts it. I'll just put this in the asphalt category. And now I think everything else is actually correct. We're just going to do library surface maps. That's fine. We look at the resolution in the lower left. It's still set at 4K, which is what we started with, so that's fine. So now we just click Export to Library. And we're done.
The next time you open up bridge, it will be in the asphalt category. This ends our very basic overview of Quixel Mixer. I hope it encourages you to get on the site and download a few surface materials and give it a try.